Okay, so now you have your ad put together, but how do you target that ad? Well, search ads have two main ways, uh, two main components of targeting. One is the keyword phrase matching. What words do you want your ad shown against? And then you can also specify things like behavioral and demographic components as well, right? So you can tell uh, Google that you only want to look at people in a certain region or a certain area. Uh, you can, to some extent, uh, try and it has some notion about uh, actual demographics like male, female, things like that. You can try and target groups, uh, individuals who are in those groups at a higher level, right? Now, it doesn't know everyone. Obviously, if you have a brand new computer that's never been searched before or anything like that, it doesn't know a lot about that individual. And so some of that targeting will fail in those conditions. But in general, it does have the ability that when it does know about the individual to turn on some of that matching, right? Um, so let's talk about keyword phrase matching, first of all. The first thing I wanna mention is that you need to think carefully about the keyword phrases you should use. And in many ways, this is similar to the process of search engine optimization. So I am not gonna reiterate a lot of what I talked about in, in that other lecture on search engine optimization here. Uh, but I want you to think about the fact that, in, especially when you're advertising, uh, it makes a lot of sense to bid on what we call the long tail. So 20% of searches make up about 80% of the, uh, of the volume, right? And it's much, much better and much more, much more in your interest to consider the other 80% of the searches. And there's a good argument to be made that if you can pick and choose a bunch of those other searches, you can actually add up to more than what's in those 20%. So focusing on the long tail leads to low competition. Fewer people are competing off in this longer tail. Um, consumers who have a demonstrated clear intent, right? Um, they have a higher propensity to convert. If they're just Googling things like law firm in general, they're not gonna convert as likely as how do I hire a law firm in Utah? Um, they, have a, they have a potentially higher valued customer, right? They're potentially someone who is looking for exactly what you have to offer and is more willing to spend the money on it. Um, focusing on the top 20% has a trade off that it's a high volume of traffic, but expensive and more competition, right? Um, there are a number of different ways, and this is something I'll talk a little bit about today, right? There are a number of different ways to actually match against these things um, and using the standard Google AdWords framework, right? What is a broad match? And that's your standard match, and it's usually the good way to go. In this case, you just put in the phrase and Google will do its best to figure out the types of searches that will match against that. Now you can do a broad match mod modifier, which is you add a plus in front of a certain word, and ads show um, against the words that they order, but only if that word is actually in the search. So you can, for instance, do a broad match with a broad match modifier to make sure that particular word is in there. You can also do a phrase match where you put quotes around the, the phrase, and in that case, Google will match against words that are like that phrase or very similar. Uh, you can do an exact match, which says, I only want to match against exactly those phrases. And you can do a negative match, which says that I don't want my ad shown against searches that include this word. That's kind of confusing and complex to think of as a group. So let's talk you through some examples. So here I have the uh, five types of matches across the top. So I have a broad match, low carb diet plan, a broad match modifier, low carb plus diet plan, a phrase match, quotes diet plan, and an exact match, low carb diet plan in the brackets. And a negative match, low carb diet plan minus women, right? Um, so carb free foods, for instance, will match only against low carb diet plan and negative match. It won't match against exact phrase because it's not the same. It won't match against the phrase match because diet plan is nowhere in it. And it won't match against low carb plus diet plan because diet has to be in the search in order for it to match. Low carb diet will match against the broad match because it's almost, it's very, it's contained within it. It will match against the broad match modifier because that's in it and it doesn't need to have plan and there's no plus in front of plan. Um, but it won't match against the phrase match because plan is not in there, there's nothing similar to that. It won't match against the exact match. It will match, of course, against the negative match because woman isn't mentioned. Low carb diet plan for men will match against broad match, broad match modifier, and phrase match because it now includes the phrase diet plan. Won't match against the exact phrase, but will match against the negative phrase. And then the only one that will match against all of them is the actual phrase low carb diet plan, which will match against all these different searches. 
Finally, low carb diet plan for women would match against broad match, broad match, mod modifier, phrase match, but won't match against the exact match or the negative match, right? Um, so this kind of gives you an idea of the way that you should be thinking about putting together these phrases. Um, as I mentioned, the exact phrases that you should use, you should look at using something in Google AdWords and you should look at balancing kind of the search volume versus the search competition. You want to find words that have a um, high volume of searches, a low competition, a high propensity to convert, and a high value per conversion. And we'll talk a little bit about how you might measure that as we go forward, right? So besides those key phrases, you can also do behavior demographic matching. You can do geotargeting. You can target a user's location and region, sometimes even down to the postal code. You can target their set language. You can target their browsing history in some cases, and you can target some user demographics, right? Um, you can actually, um, once you put all that together, what's gonna happen is Google is gonna consider your ad with those various rules you have targeted plus a bid to determine how to place your ad. So once you've created the ad and target, you need to bid it. Search ads are paid for on a per click basis. So you are supposed to bid what you are willing to pay if someone clicks. And then the search platform will run an auction based upon those bids to determine which ads are gonna show up uh, uh, based upon both the bids and uh, its own measures of the ads, right? So let's talk about the auction first before we talk about the measures, right? So most search engines use a second price auction, which means that the winner gets the best spot on the search engine results page, but pays the second highest bid price plus some small increment. Uh, however, this is also modified by a quality score, which is the measurement that I was talking about. We'll, we'll pause on that for a second. Uh, essentially, you should think of the quality score as computing how likely the search engine is thinks the user is likely to click on an ad, right? So really, the search engines are maximizing their expected value, right? The bid times some probability of actually clicking on the ad, right? So let's talk about the second price auction because a lot of people might not be familiar with that. Imagine we have four Coca Cola, four advertisers, all bidding uh, for um, a search on something like beverages, right? And we have Pepsi, Coca Cola, Honest Tea, and Budweiser. I think these might actually be owned by some of the same people now. But regardless, imagine maybe there's different marketing departments bidding independently, right? Um, so Pepsi puts in a bid of three, Coca-Cola 250, Honest Tea 235, and Budweiser five dollars. It's probably a little high for this category, but let's just play along with it as an example, right? Well, obviously, you know, assuming that they all have the same quality scores, right? Budweiser has the highest placement, so it's going to get the number one placement, but it's only going to pay whatever the best ad before it was, Pepsi. So it pays that plus small increment. A lot of these ad auction sites, that's one cent. So it has to, so the idea here is that Pepsi doesn't feel bad because they weren't willing to pay 301, right? Budweiser feels great because they didn't have to pay the full $5. They only had to pay some small increment that they needed to beat the previous uh, bidder, right? So then Pepsi has to pay 251 because that's the best ad over and they get the second placement. Coca-Cola, who's the third place, right? pays slightly more than Honest Tea, and then Honest Tea plays essentially some floor price, usually. There's some established floor price, depending upon the amount of uh, money you're willing to bid, and they get that fourth placement, right? Um, so that all assumes that the quality scores are equal. So what determines the quality score? Well, the quality score is determined by a couple of things. The relevance of the keyword to the search. In other words, the word that you bid on, how relevant is that to the search that they typed, right? Now, if you're doing an exact phrase, it's 100% relevant, right? But if you're doing like a broad match, it, Google might determine that it's more or less relevant. It's also determined by the relevance of the ad copy to the search. So Google actually looks at the, at the text you wrote and sees how similar that is to the search. It's also uh, determined by the relevance of the landing page, which Google has access to the search, right? Uh, and then, of course, something like the historical click-through rate of the ad. If people just aren't clicking on this ad, Google's going to downgrade it because that means people aren't as likely to use it. And unless people click, 
Google gets no money, right? So the quality score is also, I want to make the general point, the quality score is determined based on the user at this moment and can vary over time, right? So a different user at a different time point might receive a different quality score for the same ad, right? Um, so that's, that's kind of the basic way that uh, these different ads are determined in this space. Now, I'm going to stop here for a second before we go talking about why you want to be at the at top and how to evaluate how well you're doing. Uh, but that's a, a general idea of how this all works. The next little part we're going to talk about is more how to analyze all these results and all this data.